Hi guys, John here, the Movie Blog, with a new installment of my video blog, and this is one I've actually been wanting to do for a while. I want to talk about some of the myths about film critics, and it basically comes from something I see written in the uh, comment section on the Movie Blog and other sites a lot. You'll often see people say things like, "Oh, critics don't know what they're talking about," or they'll say, "Critics are out of touch." And I wanted to make a couple of observations about what statements like that mean. Now, before I dive into it, let me mention a couple things. The term film critic has changed. You know, 10 years ago, a film critic was a professional, you know, probably worked at a published newspaper or on a television network, things like that. And today, if you go to a site like Rotten Tomatoes, you'll see that the definition of what a film critic is has greatly expanded. For the sake of this discussion, I'm going to use the latter definition, the wider scope of film critics out there today. Online guys, print guys, TV guys, whatever. The second thing to keep in mind is that film is subjective. I have this argument with people all the time. I put up a post a while ago that says, you know, all film is subjective. Film is an art form, and as an art form, that means it's subject to the eye of the beholder. And some people ridiculously try to argue with me about that and say, no, no, John, there are films that are objectively good. Good film is objective. It's not up to interpretation. It's good film. And that is absolute nonsense. All things that are objective, all things that are objective are measurable. You want to know who the fastest man in the world is? You can time it. Who's the highest jumper in the world? You can measure that. Anything that you say is objectifiable is measurable. You can quantifiably measure it. If you cannot measure it quantifiably, you can't say, you are left with no choice but to admit it is subjective. Who is the heaviest man in the world? You can weigh him. What's the biggest building in the world? You can measure it. What's the fastest plane in the world? You can time it. Unless you can do those things, something is not objective. It is subjective. Any art film form is subjective. To say movies aren't subjective is like saying, okay, there is a formula. There is a formula that if it is followed, you make the perfect film. A movie must have two love interests. It must have one plot twist. It must use the word pervasive four times. It must use the word contradiction three times. And if you do all those things, that equals the perfect movie, which is, of course, nonsense. Sure, some films follow a formula, <clears throat> but following a formula doesn't equate good or bad or anything. All film is subjective. It's all in the eye of the beholder. Now, having giving those two little disclaimers that I'm using the wider term of film critics and understanding that all film is subjective. When I hear people say that, you know, oh, critics don't know what they're talking about, it gives this impression that film critics are one Borg-like, single-mind hive mentality that there are the critics and the critics all say the same thing. They all think the same way. They all look at films the same way. Because they are collectively the critics. Which is, of course, absolute nonsense. Film critics, look. Look at a, a, an old show like Roger, uh, Roger uh, um, Ebert, uh, Siskel and Ebert. Sorry, Siskel and Ebert at the movies. You know, These are clearly two guys who understand film they they've seen they had seen thousands and thousands and thousands of movies in the career i think they've even screen written a couple of films these are guys who understand film as much if not more than most people so i mean if film critics were just this one borg like hive mentality then every time siskel and ebert reviewed a movie it would either be thumbs up or thumbs down but what happened most of the time most of the time you get one guy would say one thing, the other guy would say one thing. Was it just that Siskel didn't understand, he didn't know film whatsoever, and Ebert did? No. They both understood film. They both knew film. They both have tons of experience watching films. But film is subjective. So they all have different views and different ideas when it comes to film and, and how they work. So, you know, Ebert would watch one film and think a certain way. Siskel would watch the exact same film and have a completely different experience. Look, all you have to do is go to a website like Rotten Tomatoes, where they have you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of film critics on there, and to see, you know, you got a movie like G.I. Joe, it's got like, I don't know, 35% right now. That means there is no collective hive mind, the critics, 
don't all think the same. So you can't really, you know, jam film critics into one big box and say critics are critics. No, they're all different individuals. Now, I also you know, get interested when some people seem to think the idea that, well, critics don't know what they're talking about. I often want to ask people, what do you mean? First of all, there are a lot of different people out there who are film critics. What do you mean the critics don't know what they're talking about? Of course critics know what they're talking about. It doesn't mean they're right. But critics know what they're talking about. You can get guys out there who have studied film their whole lives. Now, some people seem to have the idea that, oh, you know, once somebody's a film critic and have watched a lot of films, now they're out of touch. That's ridiculous. That's like saying a doctor who's performed a lot of surgeries suddenly doesn't know how to really operate on somebody. You need somebody fresh out of medical school or else they don't know what they're talking about. Of course they know what they're talking about. Does watching a lot of films, like more than the average person, kind of change the way somebody perceives films? Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, sure it does. But it doesn't suddenly mean they don't know what they're talking about. It might mean that they have a lot more things to compare it to and change their personal experience, but that still just means they're looking at a film from their own point of view and their own personal experience and their own perception, because film is subjective. It doesn't change. Uh, that, that one little truth doesn't change. There's also this idea that you know some critics are right and some critics are wrong. And I disagree with that, because once again, it flies in the face of the whole concept that film is subjective. Look, you can get a guy... Um, let, let's take say, one of my favorite writers on the web, Devin Faraci over at Chud.com. Uh, Devin and I know each other, and you know, and I, he and I were hanging out this one time, and I told him, look, I think Devin half the time, maybe more than half the time, is completely out to lunch. I, I mean, as far as what his opinion is, I, I couldn't think of a guy who could be more wrong more than half the time. And yet, I have said for years that I think Devin Faraci is the best um, movie, you know, movie web site writer uh, in the world. I really do. Not because, but that's because it's not about whether I think his opinions are correct, because all film is subjective. I'm never going to find anybody who I agree with all their opinions. It's, it's about what I think mostly finding a good film critic about is not who has the right opinions, because nobody has the right opinions, despite the funny little, you know, the joke subtitle we put on the movie blog, The Official Home of Correct Opinions. That's a joke, because all film is subjective. But I think what marks a good film critic is not who has a better opinion than other people, because I don't think anybody has a better opinion than other people, but rather is they take their perception of a film, their perception, their experience with a film, and articulate it and express it in a way that is engaging and entertaining and informative for somebody to read. I read Devin, for example, not because I think his opinions are any better or worse than anybody else's. Like I said, half the time I think he's out to lunch. But because he... But more, you know, more so than most people who write on websites anywhere in the world, he is very gifted at taking his opinions, taking his perceptions and experiences of a film, and expressing them in an entertaining, fun, and informative way. And it, it leaves it up to me. I mean, it's up to me to come up with my own conclusion about whether a film is good or bad. But I love reading Devin's thoughts on it because it gives me more food for thought when reading a film or when watching a film. And I think that ultimately is the value of film critics. Look, when you get a site like Rotten Tomatoes, where 85% of the film critics... Remember, I still maintain that film critics are basically just normal people who watch more films than everybody else, but it's still all just subjective and still opinionated. You know, if I'm, if I'm thinking about going to see a movie and I see 92% of all the film critics out there dislike it, I, you know, I give that some weight. That means you've got all these wide-ranging variety of people with wide-ranging variety of tastes in films... And 92% of this wide demographic of people saying that a movie sucked and isn't worth watching, yeah, I give that some weight. It still means there's a chance I might like it, but I might want to save my money. But anyway, now I'm starting to ramble. To sum up, film critics are not some collective hive mind. They're also not uh, people who don't know what they're talking about simply because now they've watched more movies than other people. I think that's ridiculous. I think finding a good film critic is just somebody who... Um, try to find somebody who, if you, if you, this is what you're looking for, find a film critic whose opinions you know normally match yours a little bit more, if that's what you're looking for. But somebody who is gifted and talented at taking their perception and their experience of a film and communicating it in an engaging, entertaining, and informative way. I think if you find somebody like that, you found a great film critic. Um, anyway, so that's kind of my rant for today on film critics and stuff like that. That's just my thought. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. This is my daily video blog for the movie blog. I'm John Campia.